So the last video we went over um, Brayden becoming autistic and me making the decision to start treating him and start from scratch and start looking at the symptoms that he was having and trying to figure out what could be causing each individual symptom of his autism, like particular stems that he had, visual stems, looking out of his peripheral vision or spinning objects and just staring into that object while he spun it for hours or jumping on the bed and busting the seams out of the bed. I took each one of those things and I didn't go, oh, that's just autism. I said, let me figure out what would cause that kind of hyperactivity through the gut. All right, so Brayden's recovery. I knew that Brayden would never be himself again without real intervention. He was eating soy chicken nuggets and cheese snacks every day. He drank only soy milk and juice. He had no other source of nutrition at this point. Chicken nuggets, cheese snacks, soy milk, and juice. Every day, over and over and over. I found out that Brayden's diaper rash was caused by yeast. I read about yeast overgrowth in the human gut. It is called candida and it can be very harmful and extremely toxic. I found out how to kill the yeast while balancing the good and bad in the gut. I removed soy from his diet because candida feeds on soy and too much can cause a plethora of health problems in humans. I removed the cheese from his diet because dairy is a known allergen in humans and it feeds the bad yeast. I was on a mission to do a full cleanse of my baby's tummy. It was later that I discovered the gluten and casein free diet. Gluten is found in breads and pastas and many other places you wouldn't think of. I decided that Brayden would benefit from an organic diet free of gluten and casein with limited sugar intake. I thought if it doesn't help, it certainly can't hurt. Taking these items and replacing them turned out to be an incredible task. I discovered that gluten and casein in the autistic gut can metabolize into opiates. The opiates break the blood-brain barrier and literally cause hallucinations and addiction. Brayden often had a blank look on his face with his jaw relaxed and drooling. My son was having LSD-like trips because of the foods he was eating. He was simultaneously becoming addicted to the opiates. Removing the bread and cheese from his diet would prove parallel to detoxing a drug addict. Brayden displayed withdrawal symptoms and behaviors. He literally starved himself. He refused to eat or drink anything that was not gluten or casein and did not produce an opiate effect. I had to do something because he was not getting any nutrition. I knew that he would take medicines from a syringe. I began loading the syringes with organic baby foods and feeding him this way. For some reason, he didn't refuse to open his mouth for the syringe. I fed my child through a baby dosing syringe for two months before he decided to try something new. I offered him the opportunity to eat at every meal for the duration of this two month period. I ordered multivitamin liquids and mineral supplements, and I made a detailed schedule and report of his daily intake. I, re I treated his yeast overgrowth with nystatin. I ordered allergen-free melatonin to help him sleep. Brayden began to make real progress. Once he started eating balanced, nutritious meals and getting proper sleep, he started saying his ABCs and singing his songs. His voice was coming back. He no longer jumped on his bed at all. He stopped spinning his toys and lining things up. He became interested and involved with phonics and puzzles. At six years old, Brayden appeared no different than other children. All he lacked was speech. I had begun detoxing him for heavy metals, a common treatment in the autism community known as chelation. Chelation is also used to treat cancer patients. Brayden was close to our short-term goal. It seemed he only needed to ask a question or make a statement to be a perfectly normal little man. His family and friends all noticed the changes in Brayden. 
When I enrolled him in a new school, the speech began to blossom. He was making eye contact and telling me good morning, hello, and goodbye. He would say mommy, and he began calling his grandmother Grana. He said hi and hello to everyone once he knew their name. I had not seen this light in his eyes since he was an infant. My son was emerging from autism. Everything was perfect, and Brayden's smile was back. Those are all just memories now. Brayden's almost 13 and he's doing well. He's come along quite a bit just in the last year and I'm not sure what to attribute that to. Um, he's just been fighting for six years to come back out of that shell. So he's gained pretty much the same skills now that he had then. So we're we're kind of back because he regressed a long ways and lost a lot of those skills. But now he's able to communicate his basic wants and needs, and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. The next episode, we'll be talking about um, Brayden's regression and the divorce. Please like and subscribe and hashtag a CDC whistleblower and follow me at AutismAware417 on Twitter. Subscribe!